everyone. I'm really delighted to be joined here with uh, Justin Edinburgh. He's um, our manager, of course, and um, obviously one of the top 10 longest serving managers in the Football League now as well. Yeah, so I've been told. <laughs> so um, it's, um, I'm absolutely delighted to be able to bring you on here and um, have an interview with you. Oh, pleasure uh, coming on. Really is. Obviously, um, our County Choir YouTube channel is a growing channel. We've got over 250 subscribers. We've got over 150,000 views. And um, I'm sure the people that view our channel would love to hear me have a few words with you. Yeah, no, it's so, credit um, to yourselves as well uh, for, you know, your, your dedication and your following uh, to the football club. It's much appreciated from myself, my staff, uh, the team and everyone else connected with it. So I just like great. to say that. Um, that, that means a lot. The football club. Thanks very much. So we do our best anyway. No, well, do, we try. You do better than your best. You're fantastic. Thank you. Um, let's just bang straight into the questions then. Yeah, no, it's far um, away. First one I got for you was a nice and easy one. Sum up your time at Newport in one short sentence. A fantastic journey that's still not complete. Couldn't put it better myself. Lovely. Um, second one. Um, where do you envisage yourself and the club being in five years' time? Well, I still uh, envisage that um, as long as the club's ambitions meet my own uh, and that I could continue the good work that we're me and my staff and the team are putting in right now, then I feel that we'll be uh, a very established football league team that hopefully is in and around trying to, to make that next step up to, to Skybeck Division 1. Brilliant. Um, tell me what the 5th of May 2013 meant to you. Uh, it was the greatest moment of my career, um, you know, apart from getting married to my wife and having the birth of my two children. Uh, then. It was by far uh, the greatest memory in football that I have to date. Um, so I knew what it meant to the city and to the football club, and uh, you know I made sure that the players were aware of that on the day, and uh, they certainly delivered. And you know it was a fantastic moment for everyone connected with the football club. I mean it was brilliant. I mean we had grown men crying in the stands <laughs> and everything. It was unbelievable. Yeah, no, I, I think you know when we when that final whistle went, uh, or certainly probably when that second goal went in, and we knew that. You know, the Wrexham couldn't get back into the mm -hmm. game. I think emotions took over a lot of people. And, uh, you know, when we collected that cup and you walked down the stairs amongst the Newport faithful, that you realised what it actually meant and uh, what an achievement it was for the players and, and everyone connected with the football club. Great. So, um, a, a, a big question here. Yeah. How important was the move to Rodney Parade for the club and for your future at the club? I think, I think it was the most important signing that we've made up till now. I think um, to get back into the city centre uh, was uh, a must really. I heard, you know, a lot of fans were, were very much uh, for it. I think the facility uh, is what we needed to get into the Football League. You know, there's no disrespect to Spitty, but, you know, it wasn't a Football League standard. Um, you know, I know we had the difficulties last year with the pitch, but I think we, we're now seeing the benefits of, of being there and the work we've put into the pitch. Um, and financially, it's, it's enabled us to get back into the Football League and, and continue to grow as a football club uh, on and off the pitch. So for me, it was the most vital signing that we've made. Because mm. um, a lot of people have said to me that if we were still at Spitty Park, we could have been looking at going the other way rather than up. Well, I think so. You know, when I first came here, I think... First and foremost, my only challenge was to keep the, the team in the, in the Blue Square Premier. Uh, but obviously, once we had had the trip to Wembley and the trophy, I think everyone uh, was on an up. And I think the move across to Rodney kept that momentum going, allowed us to bring you know, one or two players that we might have not been able to attract here um, in, the, in the summer. And then that certainly spurred us on to, to gain promotion. So, yeah, I think... You know, people's thoughts on that was right. That I think, mm. you know, as a club, we wouldn't have been able to grow. No. And if we hadn't <clears> have grown off the pitch as well as on it, then we certainly would go backwards. Okay. Um, it obviously you can appreciate in football these days, you get a lot of um, assistant managers or follower manager to different clubs like Mark Hughes with Mark Bowen. Um, one of the most visible things that we see as fans is the working relationship between yourself and Jimmy Dack. Um, do you see yourself and Jimmy as a team for the foreseeable future, regardless of which club you're at? Yeah, without a doubt. Um, you know, we've worked closely together over uh, a few years now, certainly, you know, side by side here. We had previously at one or two other clubs. Um, but yeah, no, whether 
you know, we continue here, which we hope we do, um, then there's no doubt that Jimmy would be a part of my team um, wherever and whatever we do in the future. OK, I'm sorry to put you on the spot a little bit, yeah, but were you ever close to accepting any offers from any other clubs last season? Um, no, not really. I've got to be honest. Um, I was approached on two occasions, um, but um, and, the, and the club allowed me uh, if if I wanted to to speak to those clubs, but um, I, I didn't feel that um, the job that I've set out to achieve here was accomplished. So um, no, I didn't. I didn't. I wasn't close. That's music for everybody's ears, I'm sure. Um, what is your opinion of the newly formed supporters partnership? I think it's a fantastic idea. I think it's uh, something that was needed. I thought there was too many um, fragments that weren't as one. Um, and straight away, though, they played a big part in us bringing Joe Pickett to the football club. Um, and I'm just hopeful that that can continue. I hope that all of them you know, back each other and become one and uh, that we can move forward and, and look positively to the future. I mean, it's certainly constructive at the moment. Obviously, being part of the meetings myself, I yeah. mean, I, I can see how it's going. I think it's, I think it's very important because not only for the finance, but I think as as supporters, we have to be one. Definitely. And if 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 we're going to be successful, then we all have to be as one. And we, as staff and players, you know, count the fans as as mm. part of this club and, and as as one. And yeah, you know, we win and lose together. It's we all we all play our part. Brilliant. Um, I'm going to go into um, your playing career a little bit, if that's okay. Um, as a player, is there a standout moment, in-game moment, obviously not like winning a piece of silver because I know you won the FA Cup, but I mean like anything that you remember doing in the middle of a match that stands out to you? Um, doing, I remember a, a, a horse, police horses invading a pitch when we was at Man City in the court final of the FA Cup. There was a pitch invasion and uh, six or seven police horses come from nowhere and cleared the pitch pretty quickly and that included the players as well because they're big old horses and uh, that was something I, I remember very vividly and, and very sort of strange to associate a, a football pitch and a football game with horses being on the pitch but I think as a an individual bit of brilliance uh, in, a, in a match, I, I stood directly behind uh, the ball in the FA Cup semi-final at Wembley against Arsenal when uh, he was playing for Spurs and when Gazza scored that 30-yard free kick and from the minute he left his foot, I just knew it was going in uh, the back of the net and uh, I've got a photo, funny enough, that uh, people are showing me is that I'm standing directly behind it and it hasn't even hit the net and my hands are above my head so you know I knew straight away that I was in the back of the net oh, Gaz was that kind of player wasn't he? Yeah he was, he was the best player I've ever played with um, So well you kind of answered uh, my Sorry, next question that? a little bit Yeah, So the best player you've ever played with and against? Well yeah I've just obviously answered that Paul Gascoigne I mean I was only with him for about uh, a bit one and a bit seasons but the season I had with him uh, was on his return from the World Cup in 1990, um, when he was probably the, one of the standout players yeah. in that tournament. And uh, he came back and he brought that form into the Spurs and probably single-handedly took us to the FA Cup final. Um, and he was uh, he was a fantastic player. He had everything that you require of a, a midfielder. Uh, unfortunately, he picked up that serious injury mm. in the Cup final and probably just took a little bit of 5-10% off him in terms of where he could have been in his career but you know nevertheless he was a fantastic player and, and a top bloke well, I, I guess he still managed to score that goal against Scotland in Euro 96 yeah no <laughs> yeah that was always good um, what about the best you've ever played against well I mean for me every every opponent was a good opponent you know I had to be at my best to to uh, to play in the premiership um, but I think all in all, I, I would say it was David Beckham. Um, you know, you had to get tight to him. He didn't need to beat you. He could cross it around you or in mm. front of you. And, you know, he, he scored some really good goals coming in on that far, far stick. But, uh, yeah, there's a lot of other good players, but you know, David Beckham would be up there. Brilliant. Um, what is your biggest ever playing achievement then? I, I think uh, when I started in the fourth division with South End, and I think possibly making a move from South End to Spurs. I think, you know, it's not done nowadays from the fourth division to the Premiership. Um, 
you know, I was only 20 years old. Um, so I think that was a massive achievement for me. Okay. Um, quite a co- potentially controversial question. Have you ever had a night eight with Gaza? <laughs> yeah, I have, yeah. Um, very entertaining. Uh, full of antics. Mm. Up to no good. Um, but... Uh, non-stop laugh a minute so yeah, yeah I recommend it definitely <laughs> but obviously not now because you know we see his, his health and the situation mm. he's in it's, it's sad to see but you know he was a fantastic player and great company he really was excellent um, who would you say was your biggest ever playing mentor uh, Gary Mabbott uh, Tottenham captain for the 10 years that I was mm. at the football club uh, great admiration for him uh, suffered with diabetes um, you know, so I had to deal with that and as well as being a professional footballer. Um, so, I unbelievable admiration for him and, and respect. And, uh, you know, he'd always have time for the young players um, and uh, a true football gentleman, really was. Brilliant. So, um, back to Newport County. Um, do you ever look at the message board, the infamous <laughs> message board? No. Probably I have best, no reason to look at it. I think... Um, I know from my own eyes and ears to know what's going on every day in training, every home and away game, uh, every reserve game, every youth team game. Um, Now, everyone has opinion. Everyone's entitled to that. I've no doubt about that. Um, But, you know, I I feel, uh, and that was something that was said to me when I first came into football management, is if, if you listen or are swayed by others, then you might as well not do the job because you're allowing people to make the decision for you. And, you know, that's one thing I am allowed to do here. The board have been a fantastic group of people that have allowed me to manage the football club. Um, And that's what they employ me to do. I'm the football manager of this club and they allow me to do that. And uh, I think that's why we have had the success we have, that, you know, they allow me to do my job. Uh, I'm focused in that, you know, and uh, I want to be successful. But I think... You know, you, you, there's no doubt you hear things uh, within the stadium on match days. Mm-hmm. You know, you hear the unrest. We all, we're all disappointed. We want to win every game. Yeah. Me, staff, the players, yourselves, the fans. There's no doubt. We turn up to every game and we want to win it. You know, we have no divine right, but that's our, that's our mindset. That's our mm-hmm. start. Um, but I always say, I think 99.9% of the time, every game that I've been in charge here, that the players have, have give. 100% effort and as long as they do that and they have pride in wearing the shirt then you know we will we'll go a long way uh, to achieving what we want so does does oh, any over negativity ever affect any of the players of course it can I think listen they're only human mm. you know and, and you can you are they're, they're, they're strong mentally strong they have to be in the in the job they are it's a privileged job but it's a tough mm. job I, I, think, I think some fans forget that sometimes you know that these players are still only human beings themselves and, and, I think, listen, it's a privileged job, no doubt about that. Mm. It's, my job's a privileged job. To be a football manager of a great team like this is a privilege. The players are privileged, but they don't take that for granted. I can tell mm. any fan now that every day, every player that comes in here works to their maximum. They set the standards, they have a discipline, they have a desire and a drive to, to better themselves every day. But we all get disappointed. Um, and this is not an, this is just a general I always think that fans support should support their club when they need it yeah I always find listen we all love winning and, mm. and we all get carried away of it and it's really good but I always say support when you need support in so that. thick and thin yeah and, and yeah. listen it, it's not easy it's not easy because no. I get frustrated on the sideline mm. and see things go wrong but I just that, and that's not and I, I think in general when I go watch Tottenham sometimes or I go and watch other games when I'm scouting and watching opponents that it's quite easy to get caught up in a match as a spectator mm. and not and forget to support if that makes sense yeah. detach yourself from the game and then say right mm. we're needed now let's get that volume up and let's intimidate the opponents let's get them lads lifted but on the other side players have to lift the crowd as well so it, it's again it's just the worst yeah, in town. It's definitely a two way street. It is, and it has to be that way. If mm. you have any success, it has to work both ways, and everyone needs to be in it together. Okay. Next question. You've, you've answered it many times so far, but then you know, I've got to ask it. What is your general opinion of the Newport fans? Amazing. I think from the day I walked in here, uh, from my first game out there to be 3 0 down at uh, Southport at home and still get clapped off. 
for me, set the president and the journey of what I've been on because, you know, I, I was distraught. But to hear people encourage and clap and get behind a team that were 3-0 down in my first game showed me that what we was achievable with this crowd because there's no doubt over the three, three and a bit seasons that I've been here that you've all played your part uh, through thick and thin. Um, whenever it's good, it's good, but I say whenever it's been bad, that people have seen us across that line and, and, and got us, you know, to where we need to be. So um, I, I only speak as I find them. They've, they've been unbelievable since I've been here, and I know the players feel that way as well. I think some of the over-negative fans do forget that we've had plenty of good times since we've been manager. I, you can never uh, control everyone's opinions, faults, emotions. It carries everything. Football. Um, but you know I think sometimes it's it's very hard to to please everyone mm. and we try that's what we aim to do you know we aim to entertain we aim to win we aim to be successful we aim to, aim to make everyone as happy as possible but it doesn't matter how well you do there'll always be someone who can find a negative in anything but for me they're the people who spur us on so I like them because mm. they 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 probably don't understand that they're probably making our job easier. Definitely, they, yeah. do, they do spur mm. us on. Because obviously you mentioned by getting the volume up. Um, what would you actually say to fans who are, who are in the crowd who wouldn't usually sing along? But then, well, what would you say to them that give us a better vocal support? How would you encourage them? Well, I, th I think it's, look, it's we know how good we've been at body parade and. Mm. Coming up in the third season, you know, two and a half seasons we've been at home now. We haven't lost many. We've seen some good games. Mm. We've seen a lot of goals. Um, and, you know, we, we need as much support as we possibly can. Um, so just 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 embrace it and enjoy it. And, and, and mm. you know, I remember when I first come here, all everyone ever said to me is, oh, if you get us back in the league, that would be job accomplished. But yeah. for some people, it still wasn't enough. Mm. But... There was enough for us. We want to keep pushing on. We want to. We want to have more success, and that is only come from from our fans. That is a major part. Because obviously the vocal support it gives a lot to the players. I mean, oh, but... it it don't don't come away from how much that plays a part. It plays a massive part. You know, when the players come out and they hear the crowd and they hear the singing and that roar comes in, you know, and even away when we hear some of that away support, it, you know, at times it sucks the ball in the net. And at Berry the other week when we was up against it, he kept the ball out in it. You know, mm. we all play our part. We win and lose together. There's no, there's no split. There's no divide. We're all in this together. Because obviously you mentioned the away following. I mean, what, what do you think of our away following? And how would you encourage more fans to make more trips? That I know that it's financially difficult at times. We have a lot of long trips, mm. and sometimes we have them back to back, which I find you know tough for people. Um, I can only say that I'm amazed and. You know, overwhelmed at times of how good our away support is. I, I don't think there's there's anyone better. I really don't. That's good to hear. Thank you. Um, the academy. How, how important is our academy, and how would you urge fans to support the small council and their funding of the academy? Well, it's vitally important. You've seen that this season in terms of the number of youth team players that have been involved in the first team squad this season, and uh, not only. You know, on the bench, but playing. Um, so, you know, it's a, it's a catalyst to us being successful. You know, you look at the youth players that financially have helped the club for this, to get the success we have in my time here with, you know, Lee Evans moving on. We've had Andrew Hughes, who's been a store in the team, mm -hmm. over 150 odd appearances since I've been here. You know, we've got Regan Paul in there now, Tom Owen Evans, Aaron Collins. You know, it's, it's fantastic to see, and, you know, Every fan loves to see the homegrown players in the team. Definitely, yeah. It's, 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 it's a connection. They, they see it. They see their own boys in that team. Mm. And that's how vital it is. It's so important. Brilliant. So um, how important is the supporters' trust, in your opinion? Well, it's extremely important. It plays a major part. It's financially backed myself and throughout the years or the seasons I've been here to, to plan a part in us staying up the first season and getting players in. Uh, to bring on on loan, to to help in and, and to continuously push the club because we're growing on it and we've got to continue to grow off the pitch and that's in all quarters, that's from top to bottom. 
Excellent. Um, going into the future, um, what is your primary goal with Newport? To continuously progress and become better on and off the pitch and to continue, continue to establish ourselves as a football league club. We've got to realise that we're only 18 months new a football league club and uh, you know, we want to just continue that, uh, to continue the growth off the pitch and continue the success on it um, and really establish ourselves as a, as a real solid, stable football league club. I mean, how high do you think we can climb and what will it take? Well, I think we, in the long term, can continue to develop and have growth off the pitch. I think there's a lot of, a lot more to come. I think on the pitch, we are continuously building and uh, having success, uh, going to a lot of big teams away from home and collecting results, beating teams at Rodney Parade with far greater finances and support and infrastructure and length of time that they've been established league clubs. But I think we can go to the next level. I'm not saying it's now or next week or next season, but I, I do feel that this club is capable of going to the next level. Then again, it's establishing in that league and never knowing where, but I think you never ever under, don't want your expectations to be underachieved or overachieved, but you've, you've, you've got to aim higher um, because there's nothing wrong in that. Obviously, there's a lot of clubs that have tried to do too much too quick by throwing money into things, and obviously, it's been their undoing. Obviously, as you say, building around the club, building the structure of the club, yeah. and piece by piece, basically, because at the end of the day, Rome wasn't built in a day. No, you know, so that's basically the the way the Swansea way, should we call it? I think so. You know, the chairman, the chairman has backed us, mm -hmm. um, but you know, I think from outside looking in, I think people think that you know, Les has bankrolled it. You know, and we, we know that's not the case. He supported mm. it and, mm. you know, there's no way that we would have had the success we have had without Les. But, you know, it's been it's been sensible. It's been uh, at the right times. We've never really overspent. You know, we've always speculated and we've always gone with how we're doing as a football club. If we feel that we, you know, we need to push, then Les has always found that, that extra finance to... You know, when we secured Christian Jolly, when we bought Connor Washington, you know, he's 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 willing to take a, a little bit of a risk to to know that we, we will earn it back or we will we will be successful with it rather than it just be an empty pot. We haven't got that. You know, we we've got an average budget, but we've got a fantastic team spirit and we've got a an unbelievable will. Uh, to better ourselves every day as a group and when we've got that we'll, we'll continue to do well. Excellent. So do you think we can go up this year? Well, we're halfway through. I think that's, you know, where we are, very similar to last season and I think our first and foremost thought is to make sure that we we don't have the second half of the season which we did last. Um, no fault around. I, 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 I'll back myself on that. You know, we had the hindrance of the pitch last year we had a lot mm. of away games we had to play consecutively without getting at home and the pitch was in an absolute state mm. after after Christmas last year but I think it's making sure that you know we can finish higher than we did last year that we continue to develop and if that takes us you know to a, to another promotion then you know no one's going to be turning that down or not embracing of course, no. so I think we've got to be making sure as we said that you know, Rome won't be on a day and that uh, we don't uh, lose sight of what we're doing or, or let, take our feet off the ground. And, you know, that's, just, that's my job to make sure that doesn't happen. Great stuff. Um, one final question um, one of our lads has asked me to ask. Um, he's um, highlighted Aaron O'Connor and the, the form he's had this year. Um, basically, is there a secret behind getting the best out of players, which is something you're re very renowned for doing? Well, I, I believe that the trust I have with myself and the players, and my staff and everyone connected with the football club is key to success. I think they they are aware that if they do well and they work hard, uh, they'll get my backing and they'll they'll be given time. There's, you know, I, I think you say it works both ways with fans and supporters and players as it does with the manager and the players. But 
you know, I have good good relationships with all my players. I like to know about them, family life, what they do away from from the football club, um, and they understand the standards that I've set and what I expect from them, and they have to reach that every day. If they don't, then they know that's not going to be accepted. Um, but I think the big thing for me is that we have a we have a great trust amongst each other. Excellent. Well, Justin, um, that's. Brilliant. Thanks no, very thanks much for, for spending time with me and talking to me. Uh, and I'm I sure. Just that I just wish everyone happy Christmas. Uh, continue your fantastic support. Um, like I say, it is invaluable. And uh, I know that the finance and the, and the time that you put in to this football club um, is tough. But, you know, it's, it's much appreciated for myself, staff, and all the players connected with the football club. Well, thanks very much, Justin. Merry Christmas to you too, mate. Top man, pal. Cheers. Cheers.